you can see it here, arising at the carotid bifurcation, travelling superiorly in the neck and entering the skull through the carotid canal. The internal carotid arteries are one of the two main parts of vessels supplying the brain. They provide the so-called anterior circulation. We will see the other pair later in this tutorial. An easy way to tell the external and internal carotid arteries apart is by looking at their branches. The internal carotid artery gives off zero branches in the neck and only begins to branch within the cranial cavity, whereas the external carotid artery, as we've already seen, gives off several branches within the neck. Let's take a look at some of the branches of the internal carotid artery now. The first branch of the internal carotid artery is the inferior hypophyseal artery. The inferior hypophyseal artery arises from the cavernous part of the internal carotid artery and passes medially across the cavernous sinus towards the pituitary gland. It supplies the neurohypophysis, or posterior part of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland sits in this bony space, the cella turcica. Next up is the superior hypophyseal artery, which arises from the cerebral part of the internal carotid artery and passes between the optic chiasm to reach the infundibulum of the pituitary gland. It supplies part of the hypothalamus as well as the anterior pituitary gland. The ophthalmic artery is next. This artery passes through the optic canal, ultimately entering the orbit. It travels along the medial wall of the orbit between the superior oblique and medial rectus muscles supplying its contents. The posterior communicating artery originates from the communicating segment of the internal carotid artery. It extends posteriorly and joins with the posterior cerebral artery. This artery, which we can see highlighted in this inferior view of the brain, contributes to the formation of the circle of Willis, which is an important anastomosis between the intracranial vessels. Keep an eye out through the tutorial as we discover more components of the circle of Willis. Just superior to the posterior communicating artery is where the anterior choroidal artery originates. It travels backwards across the optic tract and terminates in the choroidal plexus. This artery supplies several subcortical structures, parts of the midbrain and components of the visual pathway. As you can see here on this image, the anterior cerebral artery is one of the terminal branches of the internal carotid artery. Being located in the anterior and medial aspects of the interhemispheric fissure, the anterior cerebral artery supplies a large portion of the medial cerebral hemispheric surfaces. Through the anterior communicating artery, it anastomoses with its contralateral counterpart. This anastomosis makes the anterior component of the circle of Willis. The middle cerebral artery, also a contributor to the circle of Willis, is the second and largest terminal branch of the internal carotid artery. It supplies many deep brain structures, the majority of the lateral surface of the cerebral hemispheres and the temporal pole of the brain. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.